morning, good morning, good morning. A lovely frosty morning. A lovely frosty morning in December. Shall we go the... Oh, I've got enough time to go the snow route. Let's just beep and greet, beep and greet. How are you? I hope you're well. Half day today. I've got to... got a quite a full morning. It's Thursday, so I'm only working in the morning. And uh, it's a funny uh, way we got there. I've got, a, I've got a nurse and a receptionist and uh, the uh, receptionist, Ellie, has um, used to go and visit her grandmother on a Thursday afternoon. So she didn't really want to be employed on a Thursday afternoon. Let me take this off. This off. I've got to sort my hair out. And, uh, and so, uh, she uh, didn't used to work Thursday afternoon and, and uh, Lou used to nurse and uh, answer the phone, you know. And then uh, we decided that we'd rather have a busy four day week than a sort of more stretched out four and a half day week. So in addition to taking Friday afternoon off, we uh, started taking Thursday afternoon off. Although we can see patients Thursday afternoon if we get like a big job in. and. Uh, and then obviously I'll just have Luke nurse for me and we can either just not answer the phones or uh, whatever. I'm still getting phone calls. When we're shut, uh, the, uh, my phone rings at home. And um, that's ostensibly it's for emergencies, you know. But uh, having said that, you know, the patients don't know. So when they just ring and then I answer and then they assume I'm at work, etc. And they ring during that night. I mean, we, we can be out for lunch, we can be at the local pizza hut or whatever and, and the phone will ring at half past one and someone will say they want to change an appointment or something. So we, we always answer and we always deal with the inquiry, you know. We've got this sort of um, set up where we are, we're working even when we're not working, you know. we are. Uh, available even when normally dentists would not be available. I mean, let's face it, most dentists aren't available during working hours, let alone uh, available at uh, sort of six o'clock in the evening or whatever, when they're sitting in front of uh, Strictly. And uh, my wife's got used to this, you know, she, we just, it's so dim the telly, we just, we mute the telly and uh, I deal with the inquiry and then, you know, we go, go back to normal. But uh, I think it's a, an excellent way of working. It's a very, very high level of service. If you can pull it off, you know, um, it does require a certain setup in terms of IT. For example, we've got a WhatsApp group that's basically staff members. And so if someone rings up, I don't know, seven o'clock in the evening and says that they, uh, they can't come in on Friday, then what I'll do is I'll put a little uh, message on the WhatsApp group and I put it in square brackets just to let everyone know it's just a note. It's a note to self or note to staff. And the, if the staff can action it, the next day they will. Or if the staff can't action it, then they'll say, don't forget, you've got to do X, you know. So it works very well because the other um, arm of this policy is that we have a put my feet up a bit. We have a, a way to dial into the work computer and Google provides this for free. You can it's called remote desktop or something. And you can set up a remote desktop. I think you probably just go to remote desktop .google .com and uh, it installs a bit of software on your computer and hey presto you can you can use your home computer as if it was your work computer and see the work computer screen and 
your home keyboard and mouse works, the, the uh, work uh, computer and mouse. And so, uh, you know, if uh, someone rings at six o'clock and says they've broken a denture, which they did yesterday, and can they come in and have a same day repair, then I'll, I say to them, you know, I'll, I'll get the, you know, the wolf on it, we'll get it sorted. And um, you can make a note, but then uh, if you get a few uh, better, a better time later, like I might be sitting in front of the computer because I'm, you know, I'm I don't know, upgrading CS:GO or something, or um, watching a YouTube videos. Um, all right, come on in. Come on, come on. I got gotcha. you, NC54 VSA. If I was you, I'd clean that number plate. I don't think uh, the Ken Constabulary will be very happy with the state of that, the readability of that. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll just quickly dial into the work computer and I'll do it, you know. And you know we've got this uh, pain advance system where we use um, Square to send out invoices for treatment and so if um, treatment you know I can issue invoices as well so I, what I've done is I double book first of all I ring the technician to check that he can do the repair then I book the repair in and then I send an invoice for the repair and that's what's well, a same day repair we charge about 135 quid and so that's not bad, is it, for sort of 10 minutes work? Although I'll have to take a, an impression over the top of the denture. The technician always likes, it's no, just a little tip. Don't just give the technician two bits of a denture. If you can, get the denture in the mouth and take an impression over the top of it because they, they much prefer that. So. The other, uh, I mean, we get a little bit quieter. We say, well, I say a little bit quieter. We, we do get some people um, cancelling, mainly because they've been out shopping and they, you know, they thought they were going to have the money for their dental treatment, and, and then, as it turns out, they don't. Um, so, you know, for some reason, like almost all of Tuesday cancelled. I don't know why. And then I said to the girls, oh, we're getting quieter to come up towards Christmas, aren't we? And they were like, no, actually, next week's solid, book solid. So, and today's book solid, today, this morning, Friday morning. Um, and I try to always make sure we finish at one o'clock. You know, I mean, it's always tempting to say to the girls, do you mind hanging on uh, till half past one? Because we've got like a denture repair coming in or something. And I'm not saying they wouldn't do it. I mean, I think they would, but... Um, it's much better if you don't do that. Much better. I mean, nurses really, really respect a dentist that runs on time and finishes on time. And you have to have uh, be very disciplined to do that, you know. I mean, we uh, have gradually uh, got to the point now where we literally run practically to the minute. Um, now, I mean, the way you do that, to a certain extent, is building in a buffer, a time buffer. So that, um, you know, a lot, a lot of the time you finish early um, because you don't need the time that you, you might have needed if things hadn't gone as well as you thought they were going to. And a lot of dentists don't like that. I do understand that they, they do the other uh, way of doing it where they just stack uh, patients up as high as they can and then and then work through them as fast as they can and and the patients experience a sort of a variable um, see that car behind me's got stopped by that light and there's nobody here there's nobody here this why didn't that light stay green why didn't that light stay this is the stupidity of people Yeah, so, and they, they use the same buffer system as the uh, labs, where the labs always, uh, to maximize, they think, to maximize efficiency, 
what they need to do is they need to have a buffer. You know when you uh, download something off the internet or you're watching Netflix in the old days when the connection speeds were low and you used to um, get a little circle going around, buffering, buffering. Catching up, catching up. And um, the way that they get around that is they download the next sort of 30 seconds of the show ahead of where you are so that they've always got enough show to be um, displaying a program. Um, and the technicians, well, they've got a, like a long shelf, and, and met metaphorically, and um, where the buttons are on this time. There we go. And what they do is, uh, when the work comes in, they put it on the shelf to the on the right hand end, and then they take it off the shelf on the left hand end. And uh, sometimes the shelf's completely full, sometimes the shelf's half full. But the point is, every minute that a technician is free, there's some work for him to take off the shelf. Now that what that means is that they have to say to you, look, you know, you're not, you might, you possibly we could do this in a day or two. At times we're not so busy, but. Um, we're going to our service level agreement is going to be two weeks. In other words, you'll get the work back within two weeks because that's that's the, the point at which we can guarantee, even if it goes on the end of the shelf and the shelf is full, that it will have come off the shelf at the other end. And so two weeks is the longest we take to do anything. And so every dentist really is getting his pounds and bridges and dentures back in the longest it could possibly take to do anything. Now I don't need to tell you, hopefully, but that is not the sort of service, ideal service, that the patients probably want. They want the opposite, don't they? They want everything to come back in the shortest possible time that anything can be done. And that's a very different approach. That really consists of you taking the work to the technician, pot out of the patient's mouth, and saying, uh, you know, I've, uh, here's, a, here's a dental, or here's a crown, or here's a bridge or something, and they say, well, when do you want it back? Which is a stupid question, because the answer is always, as soon as possible, isn't it? As soon as possible. How soon can you do it? And they're like, oh, 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 oh you know. Like, you've brought them to work, you're paying for their kids to eat, and, and they're like, oh, 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 oh. And this, is, this has always been a problem with technicians. My entire career, there's always been this debate about who's doing who's your favour, you know. They think, uh, they take this attitude and I think a lot of them really believe that they're doing you a favour by doing your lab work. And you're like a customer and you're like, well, you know, I always kind of characterise it as a, a, a Christmas. Who buys who a Christmas card? Does your lab send you a Christmas card? Because they bloody well should do. And a box of chocolates. Because you've probably put many thousand pounds worth of work through them. Or, or uh, do they sit there, uh, fat, dumb and happy, expecting you to send them a box of chocolates? You know, for all the hard work they've done on your behalf. <laughs> so, so that's a, that's a, a buffer system. But we don't want a buffer system. I, I bloody hate buffer systems. Buffer systems are what they use in the NHS, where they tell you know, they know they've got 20 patients coming in and they tell them all to turn up at 2 o'clock. And then they, uh, they get, them in with the, get them in with the consultant as soon as they've... Uh, as soon as you know, in the order that they turn up. Which means that if you arrive at like a minute to two, or better still, if you queue up outside the doors for the doors to open and, and elbow your way to the front of the queue, then you'll get seen first. Whereas if you arrive at five minutes past two, then um, you'll, um, you'll get, you won't get seen till half past four. That's been recording. So I don't know why that's suddenly gone off. Ooh. So we run on time and we've got to the point where now um, the nurses harass me. If it's time for the patient to come in, 
and I'm busy writing a referral letter or something, they'll they'll harass me and say, uh, you know, we're running late, we're running late. Which I don't mind, you know, it's a discipline. I've and I want them to let me know because you know I'm doing everything on I'm 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 emailing the accountant, I'm uh, fixing the IT problems and uh uh writing notes and stuff like that and so I don't have a I don't have a fifth eye to keep an eye on the clock. So they, that's a good discipline for me to for them to tell me. But um, that's really what I was talking about service, private, private service, not NHS, but we do some private service or I'm independent. I've got an independent fee scale, which is a bit more than the NHS because I, I, I want to carry on doing the NHS type work, but I feel that I shouldn't be paid what the NHS pays me type service or um, that's really what people are paying for. They, they're they paying for a very high level of service, which includes, um, you know, possibly being able to ring me at a time that's convenient to them and not necessarily uh, within a set of hours that's, that's very strictly limited by uh, the, the, the hours at which you're prepared to pay a receptionist. Oh, I'm worried that's not recorded now. Oh, that's annoying. I'll have to do the first half of that on the way back if I've missed the first half of that on. Look at that. Little food van in there. Interesting. That was a derelict bit of land on the left there. and They uh, put a fence around it, bought it, put a fence around it. Then, uh, you know, like a see-through fence. And started storing stuff like caravans on it. Well, then they uh, put another solid fence halfway across because they didn't want anyone to see what they were up to in there. Yeah, that's my version of it. They'll say that it was for security reasons they didn't want people to see. For example, that there's high value caravans being stored, so they they had a sort of a more discreet storage area. Then they started advertising storage and uh, now they've got a food van there and uh, I don't know 30 years time there'll probably be a Tesco's local this is Manston the airfield we've just driven past the uh, entrance to the uh, refugee camp that wasn't there and now and then isn't there and now isn't it wasn't there anymore but it's still in there 400 people came across the channel this week, or I think in one day this week. Uh, that's where they all go. That's where I learned to fly on the right. That's Manston Airport, the old terminal buildings. That's where they had the temporary COVID testing centre in a bunch of tents. One of my old kind of bridge technicians went to work there. It's funny, I think that, you know, touches on another point, which I've made before, which is the fact that um, people just end up in public sector employment. He, he uh, wasn't really making it as a Crown and Bridge technician, uh, which was, I'm sure, nothing to do with his um, surly attitude and poor quality of his work. And um, decided that um, he was going to go for what I would imagine was quite a high paying public sector job, standing out in the cold, swarming people's noses. Um, and he did that, I think, for a few months or a year or so. And then uh, last I heard, he's actually working at the Manston Refugee Centre. So, you know, again, where money flows like water. But you take someone like that, right, who used to work in the private sector, in the dental sector, and he's now he's now working in the public sector. And so when the time comes to vote for, you know, elections, he's not going to vote for a party that 
says that they're going to cut public spending and restore some sort of sanity to the public finances, reduce the trade deficit, reduce the balance of payments deficit, reduce the budget deficit. Is he? Is he he's going to he's going to vote for a party that's like free money for all. More money for public sector workers, you know, hurrah. So only because he's got the no, his nose in the trough. And so he wants the trough to be as big as possible and filled up as often as possible, with as much as possible. So that's why you get into this doom loop where uh, so many people are employed by the state, directly or indirectly, you know, and I include National Health Service and Education Service and Armed Forces and Civil Service and HMRC and, uh, you know, everyone else, that um, they all they are going to do is vote for the party that says that the problem with everything is that uh, it's underfunded and that it needs more money. And uh, they, obviously they're still, you know, I mean, I think that RMT is on strike today, the uh, various, uh, you know, People are all going on strike over Christmas, which is interesting because um, I'm I'm going away on January the 13th, and I'm listening for strikes. You know, after that date, if there are any strikes, air travel related strikes, or, uh, after that date, then I am going to be more worried. But at the moment, all the strikes they've announced are in the run up to and in the immediate aftermath of Christmas and New Year. And I thought this morning that was a bit strange. Because it's not strange as in, you know, can't work out why. I mean, obviously the answer is why. I mean, why do staff take Fridays off? And why do, why are they always sick on Mondays? You know, it's because they, they like the leisure time. You know, they like to extend their leisure hours. And it's the same with Christmas and New Year. If you're all going to be on reduced shift over Christmas and New Year, why not have a strike between Christmas and New Year and, and join the two up, you know? But my point is that it's done that way to try and keep the workforce sweet because the it is a knife edge, you know. I mean, the when you're a union leader, your workers will, for the most part, especially if it's the first time you ask them, they'll back you up to the hill uh, if you're fighting for more money for them. Because they've obviously, they're, they're, they're an interested, interested party, aren't they? They're going to get the money. Um, but So you'll get these very high strike turnouts and very high yes balance but um they can always turn on you you know there's always a possibility that they'll they'll uh, they'll say no you know we can't afford to stay on strike much longer you know where it's difficult for them they're on reduced money and they're striking because they haven't got any money and most unions can't afford to uh pay their you know their workers even even a nominal amount while they're on strike so um strikes have to be won quickly they can't which is why the government's idea is to sort of drag them out a bit but um if you can strike over christmas then uh you're you're in a way the the members are going to want you to do that aren't they because it's like it's like going sick on a friday and, and being ill on a monday Whereas once they get back, you know, and start January and everyone's going to be saying, right, OK, I've got my bills are starting to come in now. And, you know, I've used up as many savings that I had and borrowed a bit of money off my brother, blah, blah, blah. Then strikes can very quickly turn to turn to nothing. So the fact that they are doing so much striking over Christmas is does sort of subtly give you a pointer as to how they're juggling this, uh, maintaining the support of their, you know, uh, their, their, their workers who are going to be able to go home and say, you know, do you know what, you know, if, if I wasn't, if we weren't on strike, right, I wouldn't be here on Boxing Day or December 27th or whatever. I'd be on the railway hefting great chunks of rail and doing points replacement and stuff like that, all the stuff that goes on in the middle of the night and out of hours and on public holidays and stuff like that. 
that, that we don't, you know, that we want done when the railway's not working. And now it's, they're like, so instead of doing quite a useful job out of ours, they're, they're spending some time with their families, aren't they? And that's a sort of a compensation, I suppose, for the hardship that they're enduring while they're on strike. But I think January's going to be a different matter, you know. Everyone's getting into the Christmas spirit now. The nurses have just come back. They were on strike yesterday. They've just come back. The, um, well, they're off again next week. We'll see how it goes. I'm like everyone else. I support everyone's right to strike. I just don't want them to strike on a day that I need them, you know. But my advice is to not get sick. No, don't get sick. And don't travel by rail at the moment. All right, I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye.